Hello there. It's been a couple of years. Did you think I died? I actually wondered that because I have lymphocytic colitis. So yes, I am long overdue for an update. I am very sorry. So in the last episode, two years ago, a little more than two years ago, <laughs> I had said that I didn't think I'd ever figure out my body, right? I did. <laughs> So I went into full and complete remission. Some things have changed um, as far as what I eat. I've been able to successfully reincorporate some new foods. Uh, I'm still carnivore, except for today, and I'll explain that later. Yeah, I got really, really busy because <laughs> uh, the one reason I could do my previous episodes was because I was afraid to take on anything for any particular length of time. I was afraid to book weddings, um, harpist, you can see I got a new harp. Uh, well, it's new to me, it's not a new harp. I got into acting, uh, I have an agent, I've been auditioning my head off. <laughs> I booked one, one commercial so far. Oh, and I'm also in a play, actually America's longest running stage production um, here at the in Tulsa. Um, we have the second longest running stage production in the world, uh, only followed by one that's one year older in England. It's called The Drunkard and the Olio, and I play several parts in that, in that play. It's every Saturday. If you ever find yourself in Tulsa wanting something to do, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I just, I got in remission and I went back to my life the way I wanted to live it. You know, I, I've i been busy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I seem to have abandoned you, but I'm doing really, 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 really well. You know how in previous episodes I was taking a lot of anti-diarrheals and I stopped the Pepto-Bismol, the generic Pepto-Bismol that I was taking because it's related to NSAIDs. Well, I stopped taking diarrheals altogether. I still keep them on me. In fact, I need to get some new ones because this is what I had left. So I had all of these when I stopped taking the anti-diarrheals because I didn't need them. And then when I was looking for the lapel mic that I usually use for my recordings, um, I couldn't find it. And, but I found these in a drawer and they all expired last year. <laughs> so I thought I would show you all the anti diarrheals I was just sure I was going to use. And this is only about half of what I initially had bought. And I didn't end up using them because I went into remission. I love it. I'm not entirely sure how YouTube's algorithm magic happens. If you're seeing this for the first time and you have lymphocytic colitis, what I shared in this playlist um, is how I went into remission. I don't know that it works for everyone. I'm assuming it does because so far I haven't heard anybody not having success. Some people might have had certain scares, which I will get into in a little while, particularly with cholesterol levels. And I have a lot of research that I've done on that sub subject, so I will get into that. A carnivore diet just has really, really worked very, very well for me. Um, and if you need details on how I got into that, um, you can see some of my past episodes. I don't know if the YouTube algorithms have shown my subscribers the fact that I am doing other things and I haven't died. <laughs> um, I have been posting a lot of harp videos. If you follow me on Instagram, I've posted some acting videos. Some are not the greatest. I should be posting a little bit more of those acting videos. I just haven't. I'm, I'm really terrible about social media. I get into it for a little while and then I fall off. <laughs> the reason why I'm recording now is because I've primarily focused my endeavors into music and acting, but I still need a day job. So I started substitute teaching at the high school here. And because I was a teacher, uh, my degree is in English literature, but I burned out the two times I tried. I love teaching so much, I tried it twice and I burned out both times. So I just decided I just needed some extra money for acting training, uh, harp gear, 
uh, I wanted to buy a petal harp. That's this big, beautiful monstrosity behind me. Her name is Ginger. There was an opening in the substitute teaching positions for a paraprofessional with special ed. And I started that in October and I fell in love with it. And that's, and I signed up for the rest of the year um, because they had a, like always at least two substitute paras um, avail like positions available uh, at the high school. And I just loved it. And I just, I, I, I kept working uh, that classroom and I just absolutely loved it. Those kids are incredible kids. And I really wish I could talk some families into a carnivore diet just to see what happens, but I don't know that that's my place. But that's what was nice is being able to go and work a full day at school and not worry that I was going to have to run to the bathroom. You know, I could work with, you know, the special ed kids. I could be in a classroom by myself as a regular substitute teacher and not worry that I was gonna have a flare. The only time I have a, I'm at risk for a flare is if my food gets cross-contaminated and I've been three and a half years into this about and I'm very very careful I kind of know what I'm doing I've got some nice shortcuts now that I use that helps me uh, bring the food that I have at home I bring it to school um, I bring it on set um, I bring it sometimes I'll bring it to a wedding depending on when the wedding is and if I haven't been hungry enough to eat beforehand. I got my life back. First things first, what I've been able to incorporate, uh, I still eat pretty much everything that I was eating. I think I was eating pork chops from Costco and I stopped that because I realized it was triggering some flares. Not real, real bad ones. So I stopped it for a long time and then I tried, tried it again and it immediately sent me to the bathroom just for a day and so i'm like no no more factory pork i still do better on naturally raised meat i get a lot of my meat from the ranch but i found out that the grass-fed beef at target uh the super target does not bother me so i actually get that a lot because it's cheaper <laughs> i tried the grass-fed beef at walmart and i reacted so i think they put some fillers in there that are not grass-fed beef because i don't really trust walmart very much <laughs> i've been able to reincorporate eggs i don't remember if i was doing the videos when i reincorporated eggs i use um usually vital farms eggs uh, pasture raised i've also reincorporated uh, chicken from the ranch so i can have the ranch's chicken and pork um, and i can have eggs with the eggs what i did is i started with just the yolks what i would do is i would break the egg keep the egg whites in a jar for my husband i didn't want to use the egg whites yet because if you're sensitive to eggs chances are it's going to be the whites not the yolks and because before all of this happened, I used to love fried eggs with runny yolks, so I would just eat the yolks raw. And because the eggs are pasteurized, you are not at risk of salmonella. You can actually eat these eggs raw. Um, it's when the hens are caged uh, and they don't get a chance to run around in the grass in the sunshine. Those are the hens that are gonna have salmonella problems. So I just, I would eat the yolks raw. And I did that for about three months, maybe be a little longer and finally just tried a fried egg and I was fine so now I eat eggs <laughs> um, but I have not tried factory eggs even the cooked ones I haven't tried that yet and I'm not really interested there's a difference between pastured and pasteurized by the way the pastured eggs are going to uh, have a lot more nutrients in them um, it's going to be more nutri nutritionally dense. The other thing I've done is um, I've stopped eating so many organ meats. When I started carnivore, I thought, well, I'm not eating vegetables. How am I going to get my nutrients? I have been watching Dr. Anthony Chafee here on YouTube, and I'll link him down below. He talks all about how plants are trying to kill you, and which, you know, is in my case, true. <laughs> I found out from Dr. Chafee that 
like we, we say like spinach has so much iron in it and we have to eat it for the iron, right? I found out that there are anti-nutrients in plants and the anti-nutrients block your body's ability to absorb the nutrients. Personally, the fiber blocks my body's ability to absorb nutrients at all. The anti-nutrients will block anybody's ability to absorb nutrients. That's why they say you have to eat this much spinach in order to get the amount of iron that your body really needs. The anti-nutrients in spinach will keep you from absorbing all but maybe 10% of the iron that's found in spinach, which is insane. There are no anti-nutrients in meat. There are plenty of vitamins in just plain muscle meat, in just ground beef. If you want some extra nutrients, those sardines that I was eating, those are perfect. Eggs are perfect. When you think about it with eggs, it has all the nutrients to grow a whole chicken. So there's plenty of great nutrients in eggs. I still drink plenty of bone broth. Um, as you can see, I've been growing my hair out. The reason I had had a pixie cut was because my hair had fallen out, especially with COVID, and I couldn't get it to grow back. With the collagen uh, and the nutrients in bone broth, I've been able to grow my hair. Uh, I've also, okay, I'm going on a tangent now. I also figured out that my body just does better with natural things, along with all the natural meats. I also stopped drinking wine, even when it's that time of the month. I'm okay, sorry guys, for any guys watching, this is girl talk. I used to have really, 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 really intense cramping. Carnivore didn't fix that, it never did. I switched to using a menstrual cup and period panties. So I am allergic to whatever they put in tampons and pads. Once I stopped using them, I stopped cramping and it helped with other aspects of some pain and other symptoms I was feeling once every month. You know, I'm 44, I'm ready for them to stop. Menopause comes early in the women in my family, but now that I eat a carnivore diet, I wonder if that's gonna be the case for me. Anyway. The other natural thing that I do is I stopped shampooing and conditioning, and I will link down below the videos that have inspired me on my new hair journey, because as you can see, it curls up now. Uh, and it's not even as curly as it could be, because I didn't put any, any gel. And the gel I use is flaxseed gel that I make myself. Uh, I use a clay wash, a Rasool clay, and apple cider vinegar rinse. And I only wash my hair once every couple of weeks, which is a little insane, but it's not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before I forget, I do remember, because uh, I watched the last episode that I did, but I was talking about having a Dutch oven that I'd won. It was a door prize and, and I stripped it. I did end up using it successfully for a very long time, um, but then I had to stop using it, not because it was causing me problems, but because we got a new stove top and it's a glass top, stove top, and my husband was terrified of me scratching it with a Dutch oven, so I had to get a, just a stainless steel pan. The other thing I'm going to say about um, reducing my organ meats, one of the reasons I did reduce my organ meats is because I had some blood work done and they were testing all my vitamin levels and everything and everything's fine except my B vitamin levels were astronomical and I'm going to see if I can put in like a little picture here. I can't remember the what number it was and I love beef heart and I kind of miss eating beef heart. Beef heart has a lot of B vitamins in it so I'm going to relegate organ meats to special occasions. Bioavailability in meat is crazy high and now that my body is in remission and then I can absorb everything, I don't have to worry about eating so many organ meats. I was eating liver, uh, half a pound of liver twice a week thinking, oh, I need I need all those vitamins because I'm not getting it from, from plants, right? I'm not eating my vegetables or my fruits or anything, so I need the vitamins. I can remember before keto, I would take vitamin C all the time and I was always getting sick. I got the flu like four times a year. I would get colds. I would get sinus infections. Like I was always sick. And I wasn't just taking like a tablet form of the vitamin C. I thought, okay, well, maybe the most 
easily digestible vitamin C's in liquid form. So I would get that emergency stuff and, and I would just constantly be eating vitamin C all the time. Finally, uh, when I started keto, all of that went away. I stopped taking the vitamin C because it had sugar in it, decided to try it without it, and I stopped getting sick. The only thing that I've had as far as like cold or flu since starting keto six and a half years ago is COVID. That's it. I have not had the flu in six and a half years. I stopped get, getting the flu shot except for that one. I know I did it while I was recording. I did the combo COVID and flu vaccination just in case because we were all coming out of the lockdowns and and I just didn't know what kind of what was going to go around. The reason I got COVID was because my body had never seen it before. Now my body recognizes both flu and COVID because that last COVID shot was the last one I did. I didn't, I haven't bothered with another one because I just don't get sick. My body sees viruses, it recognizes it, and it cleans it out before I even feel any symptoms. That's where I stand. <laughs> hey, editing Shay here, and I just wanted to uh, clarify that I am not an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> just wanted to also point that out. Uh, definitely get your kids vaccinated. Um, I just don't believe that a flu vaccine or a COVID vaccine is necessary for someone like me. If you get the flu, get the vaccine. One of the biggest things that I've been tackling lately has nothing to do with co colitis or being in remission. It's something I've been tackling with for the last six and a half years, ever since I started keto. My LDL went up, and I did do a video about that, um, which I'll go ahead and link it right here. And I've learned even more <laughs> about it. So I had been going to a keto-friendly doctor in a little south of Oklahoma. He was in Norman, so it was like two and a half hours away. I only, <laughs> I never get sick, so I only had to see him once a year just to stay in his roster so that if I had like a UGI or something, which sometimes I do get those, I could have a doctor to say, hey, yeah, here's a prescription. Also, I wanted a doctor who knew my history. So in case I was in a car accident or something, I have a doctor in my medical history who knows me. But I get tired of having to drive to Norman once a year for a doctor I was probably never gonna really use. I I went to a regular doctor here in Tulsa and they did a lipid panel on me and completely freaked out. My LDL had jumped. Um, it was always, since I started keto, it was high. It was never high before keto. Once I started keto, it was like in the two to three hundreds. Apparently with carnivore, it jumped even higher because I completely eliminated carbs. When they first checked it, it was 471. The cutoff is supposed to be like 130. They sent me to a cardiologist because I refused to take statins. I'm like, hmm, another rant. Before keto, I was sick, 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 all the time, all the time, all the time. I was highly allergic to tons of environmental problems. Doctors just threw pills at me. Like I was on 10 different medications before keto. Once I started keto, I just didn't need them anymore. I got off of everything, no more medication, period. But then my LDL went up and they want to put me on a statin. I'm like, I feel fine. Why am I going to take a pill? I, I got off all my pills. I don't need a pill, right? I started looking into it and I can link a lot of the science down below. Um, there's some really, really good books to read on the subject. Um, a lot of history is involved here, particularly with Ansel Keys, about cholesterol and, how, and its role in heart disease. One of the books that I highly, highly, highly recommend is, is, is fun to read, as, as his name implies. It's called The Clot Thickens by Dr. Malcolm Kendrick. There's another book called Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholtz. I mean, it's a little bit about cholesterol and LDL, but it's more about the history of why we are told saturated fat is terrible and it will kill you when that's not true. Uh, anyway, they sent me to a cardiologist 
did more blood work, another lipid panel, and at that point it was 509. <laughs> what was interesting, when he walked, like I was waiting in the doctor's office room, and then in the patient room, and he walked in and he looked at me and he said, you are not what I was picturing. Like I, he didn't expect to see someone like me. And I'm like, were you expecting to see a really obese person? <laughs> but I didn't say that, but I was wondering that. I guess because of my LDL numbers, you know, he was expecting to see someone who did not look healthy. He was just terrified. He was convinced that I was going to be on his operating table the following week, and he was going to be plunging cottage cheese out of my veins, right? I still refuse statins. I was trying to point him to Dr. David Diamond, Dr. Chafee, Dr. Barry, Dr. Nadir, like all these doctors. In fact, um, I picked this book up uh, yesterday. There's a whole group. Uh, they're called Thinks, and it's the International Network of Cholesterol Skeptics. <laughs> and. I fall under that category. In fact, um, David Diamond has, it's like a collection of essays uh, from the different doctors who are part of this group. Uh, David Diamond is one of them. He has a personal interest because his LDL went up crazy. Like he has, and he had like really high triglycerides for a while too. Anyway, he didn't want to take a stat neither and he delved into the history. Anyway, I'll link his video down below. But also Dr. Malcolm Kendrick, who wrote The Clot Thickens, is in that book as well. So this cardiologist was absolutely convinced I was going to die because my LDL was just sky high, right? My HDL is also high and my triglycerides are low. What's the deal with that? If you read Nina Teicholt's book, you'll find out that a low HDL is a better marker for heart disease than a high LDL, but they couldn't make a drug that could artificially raise your HDL. It just wasn't possible. They tried and it failed. They could only make a, a drug to synthetically lower your LDL. I was just not convinced I needed a statin and I'm still not convinced that I need a statin. So the cardiologist can talked me into getting a CT angiogram and I'm still paying that. <laughs> I'm glad I have a day job, even though I'm not working this summer, other than harp gigs and acting gigs. So this CT angiogram, it measures your uh, calcium score. A high calcium score means you're at risk for heart disease. It tells whether or not there's any evidence of atherosclerosis. My results were zero on both. <laughs> it was about five and a half years after I started keto so I got the CT angiogram last September. I'd started keto five and a half years before, and that's when my LDL started going up. So after five and a half years of a high LDL, I had a zero calcium score and no evidence of atherosclerosis. Later on, I got some more blood work done. And they happened to check my cardio CRP. I had to look that one up. It is blood work that measures if your body has infl inflammation. And it's a good measure if you have cardiovascular disease. It has this range from 0 0.5 to I think three. That's not, that's like you're in the normal range. Mine was flagged as abnormal, but it was because it was zero. Cause I have zero inflammation in my body. <laughs> if you read Dr. Malcolm Kendrick's book, the clot thickens. Love that title. You will find out that LDL has nothing to do with causing heart attacks. It has nothing to do with plaque buildup unless you have inflammation. If you have inflammation in your body, tears happen in your vascular system. When the tears happen, it's like when you get a cut, like on your hand, you get a cut and then it scabs over, right? That's the LDL. It's trying to fix the tear. And if you have so much inflammation, your LDL is constantly trying to fix all these tears. And that's when you build up these plaque problems. If you don't have inflammation, LDL isn't a problem. In fact, LDL is highly beneficial and is the reason why I haven't had the flu in six and a half years. <laughs> 
and it's the reason why I only got COVID once. Yes, I got the vaccine. I haven't had the vaccine since for over two years when I recorded in my previous videos there. That was the last time I got a booster. I just decided I didn't need it and I haven't gotten COVID even though I've been exposed. I've been exposed to flu. I mean, I I work in high school. Of course I'm exposed to germs. I am not getting sick because my body knows what to do and it's the LDL getting rid of all of the viruses and germs that I'm exposed to. There's another doctor, uh, Dr. Siwas, and I'm going to link a recent video that he did down below because my LP little a also went up. I'm like, okay, what do I do with that? And I watched his video and uh, yeah, I'm not worried about it either. <laughs> it's the same thing as LDL. The medical establishment, they latch on to these little things, not understanding that the whole body is a system. And when you mess with part of the system, it's gonna cause problems in other places. So they're telling us we have to lower our LDL because they've been also telling us we have to eat this high inflammatory diet because heart disease that they couldn't prove ever caused by saturated fat. So we eat this high inflammatory diet that they've told us to eat for decades now. That's why LDL causes a problem. I don't eat that diet. My LDL is, is not causing me any issues. With that said, hmm. When school ended, the you know school's out for the summer. Yay! I had a few more weddings. I had I was booked every weekend in June for weddings. We went on our family vacation, uh, which was last week, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be experimenting with other foods, other carnivore foods for me to try. I am pleased to say I started with raw cheddar cheese. The ranch has a brick and mortar store here in Tulsa and they sell uh, some raw cheddar cheese. And I went with raw. There's a reason behind that and I might get that in, into that in a later episode. Didn't bother me. Even with the salt in it, I was like, I don't know what kind of salt they're using. But I tried it and it was fine. I tried the ranch's bacon. I wasn't certain about bacon because of the spices used to cure the meat, but I had bacon for the first time in like three and a half years. I won't get it very often though because it's very expensive to get it from, I mean bacon in general is kind of pricey, um, but to get it from the ranch is even more so. And the package you get, there's only like six slices of bacon, which is a bummer. So one of the other things that I've been doing since I stopped recording is instead of buying jars of ghee, because the price of ghee just went through the roof for some reason. So I learned how to make my own ghee and I've been doing that for a couple years now. And I make it out of the Kerrygold unsalted butter and it was like $10 cheaper to make the same amount of ghee that I would buy pre-made at Costco. I did that because I wasn't sure if I would react to the casein uh, and I think lactose is in butter? I don't know. But I know casein's in butter and I wasn't sure if I'd react to it. So I was like, I gotta have, I have, to, I gotta have ghee. So I tried regular butter and regular, like just like the same Kerrygold butter, not made into ghee. I just took some and I added it to my food and I was fine. I'll still make ghee. Okay, here's one thing. I'm gonna show you one of the, one of the new things that I've incorporated. This is homemade beef jerky. <laughs> I got myself a dehydrator for Christmas. This is actually ground beef uh, and it's wonderful. It's just ground beef and my salt. And it's the ground beef from Target. So it's, it's the um, fully grass fed beef that I don't react to. So normally when I get ground beef at Target, I get the 1585. So like 15% fat, 85% protein ground beef. But when you make jerky, you don't want the fat. Uh, because it it doesn't last as long. I use the 90-10 ground beef when I make the jerky and it's great. And then this is what I take to school for my lunches. This is handy. I don't have to refrigerate it. Problem is, is that there's no fat in this and I primarily eat fat. That's what my body runs on. So I do still have ghee butter. I keep it in a little jar and I just, I take the ground beef and I dip it. When this is full, it'll last me like five days. This is wonderful. 
but I was using ghee butter every time I cooked, every time I would heat something up to eat, like I'd add the extra butter to, I would use the ghee. And so that meant I was making lots and lots and lots of ghee butter. <laughs> and it was tiresome. I'm still gonna make the ghee butter for the for the beef jerky and it's it's nice to have something some butter that you don't need to refrigerate. Now I can have butter. I don't have to process it. <laughs> I don't have to take the time to make the ghee butter so much anymore. I can just grab the butter right off the stick and eat it. Yay! So the next thing I'm going to attempt because I did well with the raw grass-fed cheese from the ranch. I'm going to try Dubliner cheese, uh, which I can't seem to find anywhere but Costco. I don't remember where I read this, that we do better, if we're gonna eat dairy, we do better with the harder cheeses. And Dubliner cheese is almost to the point of Parmesan. Like it's, it's a really hard cheese. And it's also the same dairy brand as the Kerrygold butter that I eat. So I figure that's probably gonna be the safest one for me to try. If I react to it, I'll just give the rest to my family. Cause you know, it's Costco, it's gonna be a huge block of cheese. I'm not really interested in eating a lot of cheese. As you can see, I was able to gain back some weight. When I went into like full remission, I finally started really absorbing all my nutrients. I'm back up to a healthier uh, 130, 35 pounds. 116 was, I think was 116, 114. That was, that's like the lowest someone of my height should be. If I were to get any skinnier, uh, it would be unhealthy. I was able to gain back some, some weight. But currently, I've reincorporated a non-carnivore product that might put some pounds on. I'm gonna monitor that. <laughs> and this ties in with the LDL and the my doctor's constantly pushing statins on me because they think that's the only way I'm going to lower my LDL is statins. Nick Norowitz, I will link down below, I will link his video, which was fascinating. He's like me. He's a lean mass hyper responder. His LDL went up when he went low carb. He does keto. He's a scientist and he did this N1 experiment on himself with Oreo cookies. <laughs> and he said you can use any carb, but he did Oreos because it's prov provocative. He wanted to turn heads, right? He j So he did this experiment where he ate 100 grams of carbs via Oreo cookies and he lowered his LDL by 71% because it was like 350 range or higher, 360. And he lowered his LDL to like 111. And that was only in two weeks. It only took him two weeks to do that. In fact, they were so shocked with the results that they took two more blood work blood test to make sure that that was really what was happening and it went down even lower and then he reset his body back to baseline uh, so his LDL went back up again by eating his normal low carb diet and then he did an intensive statin therapy treatment for four weeks and it only only lowered his LDL by 32 <laughs> percent so I know that I can't eat Oreos honestly I'm not interested in lowering my LDL I'm only doing this to prove to the doctors that I know how to lower my LDL and stop throwing statins at me. I'm not interested. So I looked for something that I could eat that wouldn't trigger my colitis symptoms, but had carbs in it. I, I think I, I Google searched what plant product does not have anti-nutrients and what plant product has the lowest amount of fiber. And I landed on just plain unenriched white rice. Excuse me, which I had today, and that's why I keep burping. <laughs> I started that yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I just had a few mouthfuls. I wasn't sure it would work because I had a sudden urge to go to the bathroom, but it wasn't diarrhea. Okay, on carnivore, and it doesn't matter who you are, if you have colitis, if you have some other, if you, if you don't have any condition and you're on carnivore, you can expect to only have to poop twice a week. That's it. And I love that, especially given my condition where I was pooping six or eight times a day and sometimes not making it to the bathroom. I think when I ate that rice yesterday, I hadn't pooped for several days. And so I was due anyway, and the rice just triggered it. And it was urgent. So I wasn't sure it would work. I did manage to cook enough that I had leftover rice 
but not too much. This morning for breakfast, I had, I put some extra butter in it and I had the rest of the rice. I wanna say it was about a cup of rice. If I eat a little over two cups of rice per day, that gets me to 100 grams of carbs. I don't like it. I already feel lethargic. I don't like the feeling of carbs. It's been a long time since I've had carbs and I've forgotten how run down I feel after eating carbs. Like just, ugh. <laughs> and I'm a little gassier than I, because there is a little, little bit of fiber, apparently not enough to trigger my symptoms. And it's specifically white rice because the hull and all the protective outer layers are taken off. Because when you think about it, plants are trying to protect themselves. They can't run away. So they have all this fiber, fibrous anti-nutrient stuff in it that we really don't digest. Our bodies are not designed to digest fiber. Just watch more Anthony JV. But I, I ate that rice at about 8.30 this morning. It is now 12.30 and I haven't felt any urge to go to the bathroom. Digestively, I feel heavy, so I'm not liking this. I'm gonna do it for two weeks. I have a outstanding blood order for a lipid panel from my cardiologist because I told him I would try to lower my LDL with food and it's been since September. It's just that I've been too busy to bother trying something new. I did not want to try anything new and have it set off my symptoms and bring my life to a screeching halt for two weeks or so. So far so good with the rice. So, I mean, if you eat carbs, I would go for plain unenriched white rice if that's what you want. I don't like carbs. I don't like the way they make me feel. Sorry. <laughs> Once I get that blood draw, you will not see me eat another grain of rice. <laughs> I'm just not interested. But the point is, every time I see a doctor, they're like, your LDL is crazy high. You need a stat. 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 I am sick of hearing that. They don't understand that just adding carbs will lower my LDL. And so this is my way of proving it to them because I can't seem to prove it to them any other way. I just wanted to have a local doctor in case I had an accident who knows my history, knows who I am, knows what I need. Because if I, God forbid, I ever end up in a bad car accident and I'm in a hospital, I'm gonna have to have somebody bring me in my own food because I'm never gonna be able to eat their food. You know how like they do it bladder catheter when you can't get out of bed to go to the bathroom. You have to figure out a way to do that for me with my bowels because if I try to eat their food, I'm just going to have to sit on a bedpan the whole time. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's going to be ridiculous. Anyway, that's worst case scenario. Hey, it's editing Shay here. Uh, it's later in the day and I just wanted to interject. Since I haven't had a reaction to the rice, I went ahead and had what I'm assuming is about 100 grams of carbs of the rice. I still haven't reacted by my lymphocytic colitis symptoms. So this is day one of my two week experiment. I have forgotten how lousy I feel on a high carb diet. It's been six and a half years and I really don't like carbs. <laughs> I am so sluggish, so tired, maybe once I'm more carb adapted later on, I'll be able to eat a little extra stuff. But in order to get 100 grams of carbohydrates out of white rice, I had to eat uh, the amount that I would normally eat in protein and fat is what I ate in white rice. And I am not hungry. Uh, I just, I feel like I've spiked my blood sugar and I haven't done that in years. <laughs> and I don't like it. And I, I feel like I'm gonna come down from this sugar crash and it's just awful. <laughs> it's supposed to be a two week challenge. I may only give it a week, maybe a week and a half. I don't know how much longer I can stand this. I mean, I know it's only day one, but I miss zero carbs. Zero carbs, I feel the best on. Hopefully, the experiment does what it's supposed to and it lowers my LDL and I can prove my point and they can stop pushing those drugs on me because I don't need them. Yeah, I'm oh. just, oh, oh, I don't feel well and it's not colitis. <laughs> it's carbs. 
Hey, it's even later editing, Shay. It's, um, I had some really bad computer issues, <laughs> so it's taking me about a week to edit this video, because it is a long one. I just wanted to say I'm starting my second week on carbs, and I still hate it. I still feel the same. I'm a little bit more acclimated to the digestive feeling of how heavy I feel. Still hasn't triggered my colitis symptoms, but about three or four days ago I started getting headaches every day and I think it's because my brain's like what happened we were running on ketones and I was happy I'm not happy and I'm gonna give you some pain about it <laughs> so I've had some pretty bad headaches uh, several days which is also hindering my editing process I'm currently trying some extra coffee because I took some acetaminophen and it dulled it a little bit for a little while, but it's still raging. My body hates carbs. I don't need a low LDL. I'm gonna stick it out. I don't wanna have to go through this for nothing. I wanna make sure my LDL is low when they do when they take my blood. And I'm gonna call my doctor tomorrow and also ask if they can redo the cardio CRP because I just am curious to know if there's any other inflammation in my body. I guess that's it. <laughs> I should have a caveat. I am not a doctor. I did have nurses training in college, so I have some medical knowledge. I do not work in the medical industry. Um, I am just very, very adamant about healing my body. Everything that we are told is healthy has not been for me. I am going about this in other means. I hope that what I've said here has helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I know that there have been lots of comments on my videos since I stopped recording and I've completely ignored them and I am so sorry. I will do my best in the coming days to address some of those questions and even some of the comments. I will try to do more videos because I know they're helpful. A lot of people seem to, like my subscriber subscribership to this channel jumped astronomically since I started making these videos and I still get subscribers from time to time even though I hadn't posted anything in two years. Thank you very much for that and welcome to all the new subscribers. I will try to post more often. I am so sorry. I'm busy. I am currently taking an acting class in Norman, so it's a long drive. My acting instructor is Jonathan Lipnicki. If you ever watched Stuart Little or Jerry Maguire, that little kid, he's now my teacher. <laughs> I'm having fun with that class. We're doing scene work and camera work and everything, so that's fun. I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Honestly, if you just have questions for me, I will do my very best to try to keep up with them. I know I've, I've been really, really busy. I'm writing screenplays. I finished writing a novel. I just haven't published it. I've been working on other novels. I've been busy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I don't know when I'll see you again, but I will try soon.